Wake up. It's time to kickstart your day with Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration. Daily Dose of Inspiration. Good morning and welcome to this brand new day. This is Scripture Link's Daily Dose of Inspiration for Friday, March 31st, 2023. And as you wake up and you start this brand new day, thank God for this day. Commit this day to him. Use this day to bring glory and honor to our Lord. And use this day to share your faith with someone and encourage somebody. And while you're out and about today, take some time and give God praise. Because he is worthy of our praise. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of our thanksgiving. Today is National Tater Day. So I don't know how you like your potatoes. I like them fried, as in French fries, or potato chips. Those are my two favorite ways for potatoes. But how about you? What what? How do you like your potatoes? How, what's your favorite potato dish? And if you have the recipe, why don't you share the dish and the recipe as a comment on this on this post on this episode? I'm just curious to see see what you got out there. Today we're going to take a look at the Gospel of Mark, chapter number 9, and we're going to look specifically at verse number 22. Now, we studied these these verses yesterday, and, but there was something I wanted to, to kind of hone in on a little bit. Um, this isn't going to take real long. It's not going to be one of our normal 8, 9, 10-minute broadcasts. Um, but I think it's going to be something that's going to help us as we pray for others, because we need to pray for others, and a lot of times, um, and what I find myself doing a lot of times, is we just give God a blanket list of of people we're praying for, but we don't necessarily give him the specifics, and I know God knows all things, I know God knows what's going on in everybody's life, but I think sometimes it's important for us to know the specifics for us to know what it is that we're praying for. And here in, in Mark chapter nine, verse 22, uh, the father is, is talking about what this demon that his son was possessed with, that he was looking for healing from what it would do. And he said, and oftentimes that cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Now here's what I want us to focus on here. The second half of this verse But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Remember, we had determined yesterday that this man had brought his child, um, maybe as a last resort, I don't know, but brought his child uh, to where Jesus was. And he brought his child to the disciples looking for his child to be healed. And the disciples couldn't do anything. And then Jesus comes down, back down the mountain after the, the transfiguration that he he had done up there with Peter, James, and John. Uh, he comes down the mountain, sees a quarrel going on, people around his disciples, and goes in to see what's going on. And, and his father says that we brought my son to you to be healed. And if, if you can do anything, please heal him. I'm sure this father by this point was at the end of his rope. I'm sure by this point, he probably didn't have anywhere else to turn. But look what he says, the second half of verse 22. Have compassion on us and help us. You see, that was given something specific right there, something specific. He's asking Jesus to have compassion on them and to heal heal his boy, to help his boy. And as as we are taking people's requests to the Lord, we need to be sharing we need to be sharing what the the details are. Now we don't need to get the scoop on every single little thing going on in somebody's life so and then we go and pray for that thing. But we need to have we need to have a knowledge of what it is going on that we're praying for, because otherwise we're just laying out these blanket statement prayers, and I don't think it's doing anybody any good. For instance, 
if you look in the in the gospel, not the gospel. If you look in the letters of Paul, all those letters that he had wrote to the various churches and the various people that he had wrote to, he always included in there in that in that letter in that message. He always included things that he prayed for for them, and then put in there why he was praying those things for them. That nineteen is important. Or that verse twenty two rather is important. And and as we're praying for others, we need to be giving God the specifics. And as as we ask for prayer, we need to give somebody the specifics so that they can join hands with us and pray one for another. So friends, let me ask you this as we start this brand new day. How are you going to pray for others? And how are others going to pray for you today? Think about that as you go through this day. And remember, get into God's word and allow God's word to get into you. And then share that word with someone today. Have a blessed day. Well, Mr. Smith, the nurse said you're having trouble sleeping. Yeah, that's right, doctor. Well, let's see what the problem... Whoa! You have an arrow sticking out of your side. Yeah, if you could just give me something for the pain... No! We have to remove that arrow. You can't take my arrow away. It's a great conversation piece at parties. I get all kinds of sympathy with it, and it helped me get a job. It did? Yeah, they asked if I can handle adversity. I said, hey, I got an arrow sticking in my side. But you could die. All I need is something for the pain and to help me sleep at night. I could give you some pain pills and you can try sleeping on your other side, but the pain will only get worse. You need surgery. I'm not letting go of this arrow. It's too important to me. I'll try sleeping on my other side. Are you holding on to something that's harming you? Are you reluctant to follow God's will because of something you don't want to let go of? God's blessings are always better than anything we have or would want to hold on to. Will you trust Him? Another message from Lifeline Productions, located on the web at lifelinepro.com. 